it's Liz Yule from Old Stables Crafts. Thank you for joining me again today. Today I have got a box for you uh, using the Let It Snow Designer Series paper and the Snowman Season bundle. These are in the Autumn Winter Catalogue uh, and they are let me find them. They're on the front cover, which is always nice to see. I like things that are on the front cover. I like things that are inside as well, but I think for the Christmas things, where there's something that is particularly Christmas, it's nice to have it on the front cover. Um, and I say this is really Christmas. It sort of is, but it could do for winter as well. So this is the suite. We're on page 18. Um, so we've got the stamp set and punch, which if you buy together, are a bundle and therefore saves 10%. You've got the tiny keepsake stamp set and the curvy keepsake, keepsake box dies. Again, they're a bundle, so you can save 10% by buying them together. We've got glimmer paper. We've got the curly ribbon that I'm using here, an embossing folder, which I've just ordered. Um, if you're in the UK, unfortunately, the Snowfall Accent Puff, Paste, puff Paint is not going to be available. We are, we were struggling to get it through German customs. Um, I don't know what they've got against Snowfall Accent Puff Paint, but apparently there's a problem, so we will not have it in time for the Autumn Winter Catalogue. There is still the Let It Snow embellishment kit as well. So I am using the stamp set and the paper with the uh, ribbon as well. So let's get started. My original is Real Red and um, the Mittens. I'm going to be using Coastal Cabana and the Hats for this one. It's a fairly standard box that we're going to be making. As ever, the dimensions will be on my website and the link to that is below, so don't worry about writing things down. All I would say is that my base, um, actually what I should also say is, this is four inches by two, yes I was right, so it's four inch square, two inches deep. To get a nice fit between the base and the lid, uh, the easiest way is to cut your base slightly under the size that you're actually looking for. So I've cut it at one sixteenth of an inch below eight inches to get the square. So the square is seven and fifteen sixteenths. How fun is that? Um, but it just makes it slightly easier. The other way to do it is to just add a sixteenth of an inch to your lid. Either way, it works fine. It just gives you the extra little bit that you need. So all we're going to do is score this at two inches on all four sides. I always, when I'm making um, a box such as this, will turn my paper. I've already said this isn't actually eight inches, but by turning your paper anyway, you know you're getting a good measurement. So this is one of the speciality sheets. Can you see that it's glistening? Hopefully you can. It's got the snowflakes on the back. So this I'm going to score at half an inch, and this is seven inches square, and it is a full seven inches square. So I'm going to score at half an inch and one and a half inches. And again, I'm going to do that on all four sides. This is paper, so do give it a little bit of respect. Otherwise, you could end up going through the paper if you press too hard. Uh, you're really looking to give yourself guidelines rather than um, doing anything much more than that. So there we are. That's all our scoring done. burnish everything and then no I had my I had my there it is bone folder somewhere uh, was what I was going to say and I buried it I buried it under thin air so just burnish everything that we have scored and then I will go into the cutting um, this is the lid is slightly more complicated than the base but it's just because it's paper rather than card it's just a little reinforced so then we come in and say the base is very easy we're just burnishing the four score lines okay now snips oh don't need that yet so all I'm going to do I'm going to do this as a Catherine wheel 
So I'm going to wedge the corners and then I'm going to cut up the score line and I'm coming to the rectangle side of the score line and then I'm going to wedge out. It just makes it slightly neater when you come to do it. So my Catherine wheel technique is rather than doing uh, both ends the same, I'm going round, so I'm going to end up with a kind of Catherine wheel effect. So again, just wedge. And cut up towards the rectangle, not the square. And again, and then, oops, last corner. I would love to hear which is your favourite suite in the Autumn Winter catalogue. I've got a few, which I know isn't there, therefore means it's not a favourite. I love the Feels Like Frost. I'm loving the Let It Snow. I think it depends on the mood I'm in as to whether I'm looking for something frivol that's frivolous or something that's a little more, I don't know, grown up maybe. Um, I'm going to use my Tombow for this and I'm going to do each corner first. So I'm going to put the glue on just so that it's got a chance to start getting tacky rather than totally wet. And last corner. And pop the lid on. So if that was the last corner, the first one I'm going to stick down will be the one I did first. And all we're doing is lining up the cut line against the score line to get a nice crisp corner. Now tomorrow will be Friday, if I've got my days sorted out right. Filming ahead does mean I get a little bit confused as to which day of the week I'm on. Um, so, of course, we'll be doing Freaky Friday. Another Halloween project, and this is by, by request. So, come back tomorrow and see what I'm making, but it was in answer to a request. So, let me just get those burnished down nicely. So, just go in with your bone folder and make sure that you've got a good seal on your corners. Okay, so I'll pop that to one side while we do the lid. So for the lid, this is going to be the same but different. So we're going to go Catherine wheel again and I'm going to cut to my rectangle and trim. And then I'm going to get rid of this narrow piece here. So I'm going to again wedge and then cut this narrow piece at an angle so we're getting rid of those two bits and we end up with that so if I continue round so again I'm going to be wedging oops missed that one so that needs to be wedged as well so we're going to wedge to the first score line get rid of the narrow on an angle cut straight to the rectangle side wedge and cut at an angle and again angle angle straight angle angle so angle angle Right. Oh, the sun's coming out. Angle. Angle. So, is it going to be easier? No, it's probably going to be easier that side. So this is what we're looking at. We've got wedging in at all the narrow at sides and then all the flaps and then straight on the rectangle edge. Okay, so I'm going to bring in some tear and tape for some of this. 
only because it's then easier at that point where we're going to remove everything. So I'm going to pop tear and tape on each of the narrow pieces. And then we will add liquid adhesive to the other bits. So turn over and again liquid adhesive. Don't go mad with it. Just a nice thin layer. And the last one. Okay, right, so starting with the one I did first, again, bring the cut edge to the fold and just get that in place. Cut edge to the fold. And this is where the joy of liquid adhesive is that you've got a little bit of wiggle room. There we go. And I'm just going to make sure that that one goes inside while I'm playing with this one because otherwise it's going to be a bit tricky to pull it in. Not impossible but tricky. And then this last one. Whoops. Cut edge to the fold. Okay. Right so again I want my bone folder just to make sure that those are nicely stuck down. And then we can come in and I might get my take your pick tool for this because what we want to do is remove the paper from the back of our tear and tape. Just fold, fold those in to get a nice reinforced edge. And I'm still going to go in with my bone folder just to make sure that that is well pressed down because we don't want our tear and tape lifting. And then, assuming I've got this right, this will be a nice snug fit. There you go. Nice snug fit. Look at that. Right. Ribbon. So I'm using the curly real red ribbon. I would highly recommend that you put a knot in one end when you're doing this because it will fray. So round your box. Have I got enough here? Uh, probably. Hmm. Not quite. Okay, I've got more. I have more. I do, I do. I've just got to find it. There we go. Right, here we go. So, start again. It was just an off cut from the end of a roll, that piece, and I thought it was going to be big enough, but not quite. So, not in the end. And round. And round, whoops, and cut. Cut that end, and then we want that end to go under there, and then we can tie it all in a knot, well, half knot, and then a bow. So The half knot will be enough just to hold it in place while you adjust. And then tighten everything up a bit. You can tie your bow. And then again, just a knot in the end so that it doesn't 
fray too much. So that's that's right. But we need a tag. So I've made a little tag out of the snowman because I think you can write on the back of that. So I've got my snowman mounted up on my D block. Memento. And I happen to know that I need to put the bottom of my snowman into my punch. So I'm punching him or stamping him so his bottom is towards the end. And then if I come in with my punch, this is where I look at my camera and see that the battery is running out. Keep my fingers crossed that I'm not going to be splicing. So that's our snowman. Then I've got some pumpkin pie for his nose. Come on. Somewhere I've got a nose. Oh, there he is. There's my nose. One nose. Some basic black for arms and a hat. Arms. Hat. And having strips does make it really easy. Now the first thing I'm going to do is punch a hole in the top of his hat. I'm sorry this is the retired 1 8 inch hole punch but you can just pierce with your um, take your pick tool something like that. Then I need some whisper white twine so we'll pop that through then a bit of glue on his nose, or for his nose, bit of glue on his head, bit of glue on his arms. Probably got enough to do that. So we can have arm, other arm, lid. up his nose with the take a pick tool, pop that on, pop his hat on and then bring back in our, oh and I'm about to go, so let's do the whole, if you've enjoyed this please, that was so close, I so nearly managed to do it all but I failed, so we'll try that again. The dimensions are below. If you've enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. Um, questions, comments below in below in the description bar. If you don't already subscribe, I would be thrilled if you would subscribe. Um, now, if you're in the UK, uh, if you would like any of these products, please consider shopping with me. If you don't already have a demonstrator or if you'd like to try out my customer service, that would be lovely. I do try and look after my customers well. Um, if you're in France, Germany, Austria, the Netherlands, or of course the UK, you can also join my team. Um, you can get £130 of product for just £99, including the new trimmer and the Christmas time is here sweet. And I'm going to have details of those over on my website. So do go and have a look at that. Um, it would be like getting your trimmer and some extras for free if you join my team because for £99, no postage and packing, £130 of product, what's not to like? Anyway, thank you very much indeed for watching. As I say, thumbs up if you enjoyed it and I look forward to seeing you again soon. 